Yep, I am actually stun locking enemies with cremation spell. Some of you may not know, but you can actually stun enemies with any hits, not just physical and attack skills. Basically all you need is reduced enemy stun threshold and high enough damage in a single hit. So this is my last build in a beast league and this may be the funniest build that I did. It's obviously a meme build but it does work very well, even up to tier 15 maps. The best part, it does not even use any OP items. Well, I do have 6 link armor but that's about all. So before I go into more detail about this build, uh, there is one more thing I need to talk about. I want to slightly change my build guide video structure. I don't really like very long videos and I don't really like explaining all the small details. So from now on I'm gonna do shorter videos, show what needs to be shown, explain the main concept, maybe a couple more things like game mechanics or certain items or certain synergy between items or skills. And you will be able to find more detailed explanation in video description. Or you can always ask a question in comments below. But at least make sure it wasn't answered in the video description. I'm just trying to be more efficient and save everyone's time. So let's talk about this build. There are many ways to do stun spell builds, so this is just one of them. Cremation is not special regarding to stuns, but I chose cremation for multiple reasons. It plays more like a totem build because you just place it and you can run around, do other things, cast other things, or just dance with enemies. Also, you don't need to spam your spells that much, which means less mana issues. And cremation has really good single target damage. You can place up to 3 cremations which is like 3 totems, however totems have life and this does not, it just lasts 8 seconds. Each cremation shoots 3 extra projectiles and the main damage does come from those projectiles. It's not the best for clear speed and it does feel a bit clunky because you need corpses. But the playstyle is surprisingly safe, basically you just stun lock all the enemies. You will not be able to stun lock Shaper's Guardians of course. At least not with this build, but it is possible. I should explain how stun works. The stun chance is basically based on enemy life and your damage. And reduced enemy stun threshold means basically like pretending that enemy has less life. And you do need generic reduced enemy stun threshold. Also if your final calculated stun chance is less than 20% it is completely ignored. So you want more damage, reduced enemy stun threshold and Waddle's mark. Because course enemies have an additional 10% chance to be stunned. Of course this effect is reduced on bosses because standard bosses have 60% reduced course effectiveness and the uh, Shaper and his guardians have 80%. For that reason I also took course effectiveness notes from the passive skill tree. So with my setup against standard bosses Warlord's Mark give me 5% additional chance to stun enemies. You can read more about stuns in the PUE wiki. Now items. You're gonna be surprised about this, but I'm using Gore Breakers. And I was dual wielding them until level 70 or something like that. But later I bought this. It does give a bit less stun threshold than Gore Breaker, however it does explode enemies for 5% of their life as fire damage. Those explosions are really nice for clear speed and they do make you feel much stronger. And it's just so cool to see enemies just explode randomly. Next quite important item is Red Blade Trampler Boots. Getting close to perfect uh, reduced enemy stun threshold on those boots could be a bit difficult. And I probably don't even need them, but oh well. Next ring, Le Hoop of All. It is also underrated item, because it actually gives almost as much damage as pretty decent opal ring, along with quite a lot of all elemental resistances. Next darkness and throne, for of course abyss jewels, but on normal belts you can get uh, reduced enemy stun threshold, but I don't really need it because it has diminishing returns after you get more than 75% and at this point it is much better to get more damage. But if you decide to make this kind of build in bestiar league, you may consider swapping stun support gem for proper damage gem and just getting more stun threshold in different ways. Next I'm using free grand spectrum viridian jewels. It would be better to use free like rare jewels but it would be more difficult to get good ones. So grand spectrum jewels are just simple solution. The rest of the jewels are just life and damage. As for the armor I am using Aziris Splendor armor. Because simply I had it 6 linked it from my previous build. The better option would be to get shaped armor with plus 1 to socketed active skill gems. Along with other useful stats. Even 5 link probably could do it. 
So you can sort of do it like on a budget build. I mean I'm not even using level 20 cremation. But I do have quality on almost all of my support gems. Oh actually I do have pretty expensive ring which gives Warlord's Mark on hit. And it does make the build way smoother. But you could apply Warlord's Mark through like course on hit setup. Maybe even an F with course on hit would work. As for damaging flask I am using wise oak and overflowing chalice. Both are pretty cheap. But I basically only use them against bosses. Because everything else gets stun locked. As for the links, in short cremation is basically linked with the most damaging support gems and stun. As for corpse skill I was using desecrate but later on when I was just rushing through maps like madman I switched to unearth. And unearth does stun even, even rare enemies. Scorching Ray Totem is mostly used just to apply uh, the debuff on enemies so I can do more damage. As for passive skill tree it may look like a mess. This is Scion and I don't know if I made the right choice going with Raider and Slayer because while Slayer is very useful but Raider doesn't give me all that much besides generating frenzy charges which do give speed and damage against bosses but I don't have time to experiment uh, more with this build. You'll find path of building import code in video description so you can see all my passive skill tree and uh, all the other items and skills and all other stuff. Also if I sound strange that's because I cannot breathe through one of my nostrils because I got cold. I'm not sure how that happens because I basically don't leave my house. But oh well. Now I do have some plans for the couple more videos before the best area league. But there will be no more build guide videos until like first week of the best area league. I will most likely do um, a stream full day of just theory crafting builds once we know full patch notes. But I may or may not upload it on YouTube. I can't think of anything else to say so thank you for watching and see you probably soon.